It feels kind of meta, doesn't it? At least from over here, where I'm looking at a computer, kind of looking at a similar situation. Hilarious. Welcome back. Happy Friday. Artist Journal, Friday 19th, 2024. Friday 19th. It's Friday the 19th. Friday, July 19th, 2024. My first words of the day to you, my friends. Welcome back. My name is Adrian Pocabelli. Broadcasting from Berlin, Germany on a beautiful, beautiful, sunny Friday morning here. So, hallelujah. Thank you for the massive response on the last video and everything. As I continue to struggle with the technical difficulties called my hair. Uh, but luckily, you know, recently, those are the only technical difficulties I'm having. So, that is wonderful. So, I, I was mentioning Kappen yesterday. For those that don't know, um, talking about uh, when I was talking about die with the most likes and the static and the dynamic pixels, the moving pixels and the or the moving parts of the image and the parts of the image that are not moving, that is uh, this is Capen who here is going under I think also goes under figments uh, and here is going under figments. Okay, this is part of a series, kind of a. I don't want to call it obscure, but it's not the most uh, well-known series. Put it this way, when I was looking at it, and I follow Kappen's work pretty closely, I didn't realize the series existed. Let's put it that way. Uh, so just a cool series here by uh, by Kappen. And, uh, you know, here's just another example. When you move in, when you zoom in, of what's at work here. And, of course, using uh, vintage software, retro, retro tools, as I like to call them. Look at this shelf. Right, and this just, I think this is like some sort of 1980s software. I think Kappen mentioned it. For those that want to dig, it's on the space we did maybe a year ago. Kappen out of Costa Rica, aka Figments. Uh, when you go up close, it's quite amazing, isn't it? Even here, again, you see the power. Here, the pixels aren't even really moving. I guess maybe you could say they're moving a little bit there, a little bit here. Uh, but just even to put static... And again, flashing and non-flashing pixels, there's something really, again, it's contrast, you know, at the end of the day, but it's a kind of contrast you only find arguably in digital art, right? So it's what we might call a new contrast, new contrast. And here, I believe this is the title of the work, T Taco, TAC OS or Tacos, uh, again, uh, coming out of Costa Rica here, perhaps there is a connection there. And look at how beautiful, you know, you see the mouse and the horizontal, the horizontal pixels here as well. Uh, just uh, beautiful. Uh, the keyboard, not worrying about needing to get every row of the keys. So it's kind of almost, you could argue, a kind of impressionistic take. Of course, there's usually more than two rows of keys here. Right, so kind of drawing in a way that makes the image work, we might say. I mean, what are the Impressionists doing? You know, as they go en plein air with their newly, you know, new technology of having paint tubes to go out into the open air and travel around, which impacts the art. What are they doing? Uh, they're doing what works. And of course, if you're in plein air, you're kind of working fast, which we're going to return to. We had another comment on that today. Uh, and so you're just doing what you need to do. We're back to the pragmatics of art making. Fascinating, actually, and super important. For those that don't actually, say, make art and draw, but are like love the art... Uh, the pragmatics of art making are incredibly important. Like, in a sense, you could argue it is art making, or it is a large, it is the component. I mean, it's tempting to say. Again, the Greek word, uh, techne, that is art. You might call it little a art. Right, uh, the techne of shoemaking, the tech, the art of shoemaking. You know, the windows, uh, you name it. Uh, making a computer or making a table, table making. I have a friend whose last name is Tischler. Shout out to you, Carl. Uh, table maker. Right. Uh, so the pragmatics. Uh, so what is art? 
And actually, we have another tab that actually asks us, I think it was Ed Marola, what are we doing here? Uh, you know, part of what art is, in a sense, why is art called art? I mean, I think that's kind of like almost the bigger issue. And it's like, if we're just to speculate out loud here in this public journal, uh, you know, it's making. Art is making, and you could argue with technical, uh, with technique. It's making with technique. Techne. Where do we get the word technology? Uh, what does technology do? It helps make, like, it, it's a, what is technology? You know, again, techne, art, the art making, like, all of these things can start to come together here. And so you can even apply these kind of dis seemingly disparate concepts when you don't, the value of knowing a little bit of Greek, right? Because once it all comes to, once you start associating, and we have another tab, back to the psychedelic psilocybin issue of association, once you start associating everything together here, then you can look at, you know, Kappen and go, okay, Kappen is just, what is the art here? Like, what is the technical side of things? I'm back to this. What are the pragmatics of making this art piece? And I'm back to this very simple uh, keyboard with two rows, right? And then there's the third row, maybe the F keys, right? And everything, the function keys, right? The numbers. But really, there should be three. And we're kind of back to this, you know, it's a digital impressionism. But we're back to the impressionists. And it's like, they didn't have time to put every little thing. And that need for speed actually created a different kind of art, a different kind of technique, right? So, uh, and using, weirdly, as we incorporate and try and understand all this, using new technology, the paints, right? Uh, the, the, the portable uh, tubes that you could take out into the field and all of a sudden I can do a landscape, again, en plein air, rather than in the studio. Right. And then, of course, you have to work fast because things are changing constantly out in that landscape. Right. The clouds are moving. The sun is coming in and out. Uh, the scene is changing. A need for speed. And so isn't it interesting? Right. As we go back to Cap'n here in this wonderful chair. I mean, the things like this is another kind of fun thing about art. I mean, is that a coffee? I love the coffee and the chair. Look at this chair uh, with these horizontal, again, these kind of, it looks like a, a different kind of ratio, right, in the pixels. These, these look like kind of flatter, horizontal, biased pixels. Look at the cross here. It's like there's a two to one or something towards the horizontal or something. Uh, so, again, the benefits of trying out different kinds of software and I think, actually, not only does this use kind of an obscure software, but I think it also it uses two, if I remember Kappen's, uh, what he was saying about this, it actually uses GIMP, as far as I remember, on the animations, as far as I remember. So two softwares, we're back to exporting, right? So isn't that interesting? Another technique, you could argue, I would argue. Uh, so this is Tac OS still available, and I'm kind of like... What is it? Foreshadowing? We're kind of foreshadowing all our tabs. We almost don't need to look at the tabs because, of course, there was the statement, which a lot of you saw on, you know, digital art becoming a $100 billion industry or 85, whatever it was, eclipsing the regular art market. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. And I don't want to kind of scoop myself on that tab. But just with that in mind, let's say this thing does. And I think people who have collected it, who have collected digital art, actually, I think probably more than half would say, yeah, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. And then you have to ask yourself the question, which art is then going to, what's going to make up that $100 billion art market? Is it all going to be artists we haven't seen before or heard of who are still coming down the pike? You know, coming in the pipeline? Or is it going to be artists who we probably already have seen? Are we looking at a present day, are we looking at a kind of contemporary classic? of sorts without even realizing it. Here it is. And isn't it always how it goes? They sell for pennies on the dollar. They're selling for $8.06, still available, edition of 16. 
it, you know, I was thinking to myself as I was drinking my two, three coffees, as I do before I start this show, a little secret, another technique, part of the art of making this show, crucial component. Uh, I was thinking about, you know, $8.06, like, I was thinking about how cheap these are. Look at this work of art. $8.06, and isn't it always how it goes? Isn't this how it begins, like, these things? So I'm kind of back to what we were saying the last couple of shows. Be glad it's small. Be glad you can buy this art for pennies on the dollar. And if you want to go on secondary, you can still get it for 16 Tezos and 15 Tezos. And this awesome one for like $20. And actually, I brought these up. I brought these up. So here, uh, this came out January 6th. So the other one just came out. This one came out January 6th. Again, available for 16 Tezos. Another one available for 25 So just a plant right? And yeah, just one of my favorite artists, uh, Kappen, going under figments here, the energy. And again, interestingly, I think similar to Ed Marola, coming more out of, like Ed Marola came more out of audio kind of commercials, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, figments, Kappen also basically came out of a band, but got inspired by what he saw in the 2020, 2021, and just has a natural ability, as Ed Marola does. And very prolific. And there's, again, there's credibility. You can start, and these artists didn't start at zero, but it's actually quite interesting. And I really want to keep these shows short, but I just want to show you Kappen's journey here because it's actually quite fascinating with Object's wonderful website where they just load up everything. We'll see if my internet cooperates. And actually, we can just go even better so these are recent works, but we can go from oldest. Let's see if it loads up. So you see, I mean, here this awesome artist, uh, you know, starting in what you might say, like, you know, kind of simple works here, you might say. This, I love this series. I mean, look, and you can get these like early works here. I think I picked up two of these. I think I'm pretty sure I have these band rooms. Uh, so yeah, some of them are expensive. Some of them are not so expensive. Uh, and you, again, you have to be grateful here, but you see the development. And my point is, people can start, I would say, r relatively humbly and just trying to make their way, do a little pattern, add a little animation. And within a couple of years, let's look at the date on this. Like here we are, mid-2024. This was January 17th, 2022. So if you really put your mind to something for two years, uh, look at how far you can go. And it didn't take Kappen very long to start making what I would consider darn poetic works. Okay. Uh, so again, some people, and who knows, maybe Kappen just has a natural uh, sense for it as well, but you can't dismiss. And, you know, it's sort of like, you know, they talk about longevity you know, environment being, what is it, 30%, uh, genes being, you know, 50%, whatever it is, right? Uh, but you cannot, you know, you can affect the result. It's not simply uh, purely based on quote-unquote talent. You know, uh, so all to say, here's another one, December 20th, Plant Labo 2, just rad, you know, to quote Waffles, rad. And look at that awesome table here and the chair. Look at, the, interestingly, it's almost like, there's almost like, look at this. I, I have to very op quickly open this up. L what is going on here? You see this? You see the pink of the chair going over top of the table? Like, I guess another layer. Uh, pretty fascinating, actually, results here, isn't it? Letting it shine through, because, I mean, you have almost a decision to make as an artist. We're back to the pragmatics of making an art piece. For those, and I find, I think if you don't make art, maybe this is extra fascinating. If you do, maybe it's like, of course, Adrian. But, uh, you know, one of the decisions you'll have to make as an artist is, oh, well, the chair should be blocking the table. So really, I should have black in here would be what I would call the rational thing to do. But as an artist, you might go, you know what? You know, this is where the poetics of art come into play. And, you know, the poet, you know, as I like to call art, uh, po a poetic form of design. It's like, un it is a form of design, but it incorporates irrational elements and 
here is, you know, exhibit A, okay? Uh, exhibit A, you know, it's like, well, actually, if this was like purely graphic design, we should put black here so that the chair doesn't shine through and that would be the rational thing to do and because the chair is blocking the table. But this is art. And I'd argue it's far more poetic and I would argue beautiful to let this bleed through and uh, just put the chair on top and not worry about it and actually let these colors dance off of each other, right? Uh, with the, the table and the chair, right? That's where it starts to become more poetic and art. And here's a nice little landscape in the background. Look at this. I mean, this could be a work unto itself. I mean, this the curtains, right? And sometimes, you know, again, if you're struggling out there, look at this. Even this interesting little, almost like a fill, that has just caught the edge, weirdly. Uh, there's almost like a blue fill on there, interesting. Uh, you know, outline of these pixels. Not all of them though. This is something that would happen oftentimes if you're working afterwards and you do just like a fill. Uh, not sure how that happened. Interesting, interesting. And look at this, look at this plant. So again, I'm trying to keep these under an hour so that I can put them on TikTok. And so we got to speed up here. Uh, Plant Lab 01, uh, another one, another one, another one. And here, okay, but here we decided, or the captain decided, you know what? I don't want, actually, you know what? It probably just covers the red. Finally here, I'm, I'm back to these computer chairs, hilariously. Weird thing to focus on. And you got to love how the color of the computer, just black and white there. Let me see if I can zoom in. And they're quite rad to zoom in on. You can imagine this on a huge screen. Digital art alchemically transforms when you make it super large. This is a very important kind of principle and point. Okay, like I have this Peloponnesian War series. When it's small, meh. When you put it on a screen, it's like, wow, from my own perspective. Weird. Alchemy, right? I mean, how do you explain it? The meaning, the visual meaning changes, dare I say. Now here, I was like, oh, well, look at the cap in here decided to block it out. But maybe that's not what happened. As a matter of fact, he just probably put it on and it just happened to probably cover all of the red pixels here. So isn't that interesting? It, you know, it's not like this was blocked out, probably. But who knows? I would have to, you know, really spend 10 minutes and try and, you know, open this in Photoshop to find out. But isn't that interesting? Using a similar color scheme, by the way. Rad, rad. Again, I feel like I'm, it's meta. I feel like I'm looking at my studio here, uh, of course, with a newer computer at my side here or in front of me. Anyway, figments, object, T Tezos, still got it. Still got it in spades. Uh, let's continue. Uh, Tuna Kuna. Speaking of Tezos, huge Tezos uh, community uh, member here and bull and, you know, uh, just really cool enthusiasm uh, on what is happening on Tezos. Fascinating vision of where he wants to take uh, things uh, right at the, in the last few minutes there. Fascinating uh, how he wants to make it physical uh, stores and everything. Brilliant. As, as I said in the space, as you say it, I see it. A, a, a vision with details. Uh, let's continue here. Just a couple of comments. Great show as always, Rosatio. Thanks for featuring my work. Thank you, Rosatio. A couple of nice comments you put online there. Totally appreciate it. Grave Otopia, a great episode. Awesome to hear. So thank you, both of you, uh, for the comments there. And also on X, we got a big response here. 59 retweets, 176, 21 bookmarks. I guess I even bookmarked it. I was all of the excitement. I even bookmarked uh, Clown Vamp. Ooh, well, listen. Uh, thank you, Clown Vamp. Awesome to hear from you. Just put out, a, I think, some videos, interestingly, on Super Rare. Juan Pez, thank you for the comment. Trippy Collector, going to be dope Wednesday, kicking off the show with Die With The Most Likes. Indeed, uh, again, I feel like it hasn't happened enough, interestingly. Tommy, good meet. Hilarious. Lena Eckert, thanks a lot for including the Got That, that Flow work. That was a beautiful work. Like, I was looking at it again this morning, Lena, and I was like, I wanted to put it in the show, but I had just put it in the show. But, like, fantastic. Fantastic work. I uh, was enjoying, was excited through the recap. Phenomenal work. Thank you, Owen. 
uh, great to hear from you. A very nice uh, comment there. <laughs> Nico Lurchi, amazing episode. So thank you all for the wonderful comment. We got waffles going as le vent, or the wind in French. Thanks, Poco. Probably a small collection, to be honest. About 98% is Mario artist. Interesting. So we were speculating on waffles, kind of new, kind of PFP style project, or at least portraits, being like, oh, there seems to be a little bit of copy, copy and paste from other uh, works just needed the characters on side to tie in some themes and needed a better font for lyrics. Interesting. So, uh, so needed the characters on the side to tie in some themes and needed a better font for lyrics up top. By the way, it was a live Joy Division album that made me revisit. Fast version of Lost Control and also Warsaw later in the set. And yes, I was thinking I had a bootleg of Joy Division. It was live in Amsterdam. And I remember both. I feel like I've heard this before. There aren't that many bootlegs of Joy Division. I haven't heard them all. I've, that's the only one I had. Uh, but I remember a fast version of She Lost Control, very famous track for those that don't know, uh, as well as hearing Warsaw, which is a very cool track. Starts Substance, Joy Division Substance. Oh, nice. I wonder if it was the same concert. Yeah, I had to go back to the beginning before comprehending something like Dead Souls. Now, prefer, personally, prefer the gloomier, slower temper, tempo period, which is interesting. Because I always kind of had a bias towards the more energetic works of Joy Division. Um, but now I have to... I don't know if I prefer them. I still find them in incredibly dark. Almost too dark. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So, anyway... Uh, but I do appreciate them, you might say, a little more than I used to when I kind of just want things... I want the energy. I want the energy. Uh, let me actually see very quickly uh, Joy Division bootleg live in Amsterdam. Let me just see if I can bring that up. We'll see it. Like, I mean, this is the thing. This is one of my uh, one of my things is not everything makes it to the internet. I think it was was it Parad live at the Paradiso. I think it might have been that one waffles. If you're watching. Uh, but it had a different cover. It was a cassette, okay, back when we had cassettes. Maybe it was this cover, but I don't think so. This is like a newer version. Finally, I'll just put cassette, and we'll move on with our show here. I, yeah, I, I feel like I remember this. I do remember something like this. It was pretty lo-fi. Uh, but as far as the cover, I remember it being black and white, almost as if it was photocopied. You know, like a true bootleg. It's probably worth money at this point. Uh, anyway, uh, I don't. It wasn't that. So very cool. Let's just take a quick look at the other comments. Thank you, though. I love the. I as you can see, I could probably spend the entire show. I still in my mind, I kind of want to have shows on Joy Division and whatnot. So I don't know how that fits in. Uh, but I continue. At least I'm getting the show shorter in theory. Let me continue here. Carolina Braga Ferreira, very nice. Thank you. Bullseye, uh, you know, referring to Die with the Most Likes. Heart, awesome. Ariel, Oliveira Durdovic, great listening now. Congrat. And I think beautiful work. I think we have another one by Oliveira Durdovic. This show, Brain Dead. What a year it has been indeed. Let me tell you that you're one of the prodigies of Web3 for me, and I'm always honored to be seen through your radar. So once again, thank you for lighting our way into the digital art ocean. It indeed is an ocean, isn't it? It's, we're kind of lucky. We kind of have, I was saying I was, you know, used X and I used uh, Instagram. I also use object. That's probably the, the basis of this show. The foundation is very much on object. If you look at the early shows, you'll see it's all just object notifications. Speaking of which, I continue to have issues with the object notifications. It just cycles through the last 50. I get the first 50, and I mean to say, and I just get the first 50 repeated over, which is unfortunate. So I miss tons of works. There's, I, I can't, yeah. So just if anybody from object is watching, still having issues with the notifications. Uh, continuing on, it's the, the JavaScript where it's the infinite scroll, uh, I just get repeated. It doesn't continue to scroll. Maybe it's my internet, I don't know, but it's an issue. Uh, otherwise, fantastic website. Just quick look at the community, uh, and it continues to grow here. To thank you for posting, very interesting, original, never seen anything quite like this, kind of mixing 
what looks like kind of uh, font with digital painting. Interesting combination there. And here's Texadelic uh, going to get involved in the horse trading. Another interesting combination of kind of pattern. Almost looks like the ghost from, uh, from uh, Pac-Man with the drawing here. Very interesting. And another G-Rogs portal. So cool pixel art here, kind of wild. Where's this? This is on Zora, free open edition. And Skull Takes posting a new Kiro work. These are awesome. Another video painting by Kiro, beautiful abstracts here. And this work we saw last show, of course, by Sky Goodman, just awesome. Also, we heard from uh, Dai, Dai with the most likes chimed in. Really thoughtful discussion of coats we once wore by Poco. Huge thank you for the thought. Thank you, Dai with the most likes. Very very great, uh, gracious individual there. So thank you, everybody. Really nice uh, response there last episode. Thank you, everybody, for the support. Joshua Siegel. So as I was foreshadowing earlier this episode, we tracked brain changes in healthy adults before, during, and for weeks after a large dose of psilocybin. And again, six months later. So we're back to this whole uh, situation. What does it do to the brain? Psilocybin caused profound and widespread desynchronization to brain activity, altering connections across cortical networks and subcortical structures, paralleling Carhart Harris's entropic brain hypothesis. So here it is. So before the treatment, and I was discussing this just anecdotally, qualitatively, when a person is thinking about nothing before the treatment, when a person is thinking of nothing in particular, the brain settles into characteristic activity. Really, these these paths are already made in the mind, in the brain. It's called the brain. Into a character characteristic activity pattern that varies little from day to day. This heat map of an individual resting brain is dominated by cool hues, blue and green, something limited show uh, something limited variability over time. Then they are consuming it. And again, talk to your you know, professional. These, this is not an endorsement, by the way. Uh, talk to a professional if you've never done this or you thought, just so you know. Let me just uh, couch this all in that statement there. Uh, the trip, so when people are on psilocybin, consuming psilocybin causes profound changes to a person's normal brain activity patterns shown in the heat map as yellow, orange, and red areas. So you see all these new connections or activity is being made, is happening. Let's just call it activity. But how is the activity happening? Right? It's like new paths are being created. I assume neurons are connecting, right? But feel free to disagree. Maybe that's assuming too much. These disruptions are experienced as a psychedelic trip. So novel brain activity here outside of the regular paths of what's what we sometimes call default consciousness. Long-term, days after drug treatment, brain activity patterns are back within their normal, narrow range, but researchers have found persistent small changes that could indicate lasting therapeutic effects. Now, I think that's what happened to McKenna. I think Terrence McKenna. I think that's what happened. I think he did, and again, this is not an endorsement, and McKenna has all sorts of issues, frankly, from, you might say, from a scholarly perspective, but also unbelievable scholar at the same time. Uh, so let me just say that too. Um, but his ability with speech, uh, I don't think this is accidental. I don't think he just happened to be very good at speech. I think maybe he had a natural ability and then it was accentuated is sort of my theory on that. Now, we also foreshadowed this. So we're going to continue to follow that super interesting because I think it's actually quite valuable to us understanding our main machine that helps us understand the world here. It's a model. It's a very interesting model. Jamie Gurley, who I think is from uh, Verseworks, the digital art market will dwarf physical $65 billion one day. Small transaction fees, less friction, and potential mass appeal make this close to inevitable, in my opinion. I think a lot of people who, are, who have collected, such as myself and many of the people who watch this show who make art, I... I agree. It's kind of, it feels like it's a matter of time, and it may be 20 years, it may be two months, who knows. We just need the future global superstar artists to get us there. I actually think they're already here. Um, <clears throat> we just, I don't think we need that, like, I completely disagree with this part here. Uh, I think we already have them. 
I think it's I think it's an awareness issue. I think it's an awareness issue. But I mean, maybe maybe a new artist comes and then all of a sudden it captures everybody's imagination in the public. But you know, that's a weird question because usually the public doesn't have you know generally speaking, uh, the public isn't necessarily the best curator as a as a entity. I would argue. So. Yeah, so totally agree with these first two lines, though, and very interesting, provocative thought, and I agree. And then you go, what's the next implication of this? Well, what does that mean for those Kappen works we're just looking at, right? Uh, is all the value going to be in works that are made after now, or are they going to be in like a lot of the stuff we see on Tezos, which is imminently collectible? Again, check out the space we did with Tuna, a great collector. His dad collected baseball cards, big baseball card collector, so... Uh, Jenny Surtis responding, uh, it's pretty simple, a prominent collector in the space. It's pretty simple. I own 6,000 NFTs. Incredible. But I only own 100 to 150 physical pieces. Uh, why? Not enough walls, so can't display the vast majority of my pieces collected. Still quite a, that's a pretty significant physical art collection. Physical art storage is a pain. Indeed. And who's got the money or the space to store physical art? Physical art pieces can get damaged usually in transit, but also in storage, right? Humidity, you know, you have them in a pile and then stuff gets, you know, shuffled around. Time lag when purchasing, selling and receiving. And it's also for the artist, it's better. So uh, there's something kind of awesome. And I would also add one more thing. The energy. Uh, it's kind of a new frontier, digital art, I would argue. And I think we're only scratching the surface right now. Let's continue. Artie Hands, what sounds the least lame? I think this is actually a great poll because increasingly I am sort of tired, just on a personal level, of the NFT word, interestingly. Like, I, I don't want to talk about NFTs. I want to talk about digital art. Uh, tokenized art, no. <laughs> Be quiet. Uh, so digital art, uh, and I think it's like nobody is talking about physical art as the way we buy it and sell it as like, you know, I don't know, cash register art. I think someone's made this point several months ago. We don't call it cash register art or or uh, check art or, you know, whatever the case might be. We call it uh, fine art or, you know, oil painting. It's digital art. And that we can work with. And it's not going to, it kind of loses the crypto stigma, which is maybe also to help get us to that $100 billion, uh, you know, mark, for lack of a better term, Asset class size. Uh, so, Artie Hands, interesting, uh, interesting post uh, poll. Ed Marola, GM. What is art? Why do we care? Why we care? As much as I feel like I should know, I'm constantly confused. And this is, you know, I think it comes back to this confusion. Uh, you know where I think the source of the confusion is? Is, is exactly how I opened the show, which is we talk of the word art comes out of this idea of techne, which is a technique. So again, it, and it doesn't have to do with anything poetic. It can be, how do I make this glass? How do you, you know, make this table, as we were saying? How do you make a shirt? How do you sew? There's an art to, you know, making shoes, etc. And somehow, over the years, it's kind of developed this, this other kind of thing, which is what I'd call poetic making, it's a kind of visual poesis, maybe for lack of better terms, kind of still got grouped within art, small a art. In a sense, we might say poes poetic making is what we might call capital A art, and everything, the general sense of making is what we might call small a art. Some, you know, that's why we have the word fine art, perhaps, right? So I think this is part of the... Uh, confusion is actually a, it's a bit of a semantic issue, I would argue. Why do we care? What is art? Right? So kind of a different angle at, you know, these issues. And uh, yeah, it's, again, back to Tuna, who's been to war, I think a couple of times, a very interesting discussion on why we care. It's like you come back and it's like, well, what matters? Right? can be taken out at any time. What matters? And then all of a sudden, Tuna's really into art. Well, you know, it's not a huge jump, as some might think. 
Let's continue so we can keep this under an hour, hopefully. Uh, pl very interesting post. Uh, kind of not really a huge fan of this, but uh, we have to note it here. Gorkor, how art got a new taste for gruesomeness. And just an interesting uh, situation here in the zeitgeist. Uh, images of bloodshed and butchery are inescapable in the digital age. I don't know if I'd say they're inescapable, but you do come across them once in a while. As artists increasingly turn to gruesome imagery to portray the pain of the world, Doron Boynes looks at how gore and art has swung between taboo and trend. And finally... Uh, with the recent surge of war footage, true crime prod podcasts, medical education videos, and dedicated gore group chats on Telegram. I mean, this stuff used to be called smut, right? On Wasn't it? I mean, this stuff used to be illegal. It is clear that gruesome images have regained prominence in visual culture. Uh, so anyway, it's just kind of an interesting development there is we look objectively at what's going on. And here's a walks at $72 on eBay. And of course I follow walk that is a glitch on X when you open a million tabs. Look at how beautiful this is. So 72 at $72 getting more uh, bids on eBay. Brilliantly. Dan Control, uh, all animals. So here's this beautiful, uh, look at this beautiful uh, room that Dan Control's work is being shown in. And you go up the stairs very playful, isn't it? And you see, I mean, this is a massive show that Dan Control has put on and putting all the animals together. And there you have the pigeons and everything. Look at how beautiful this is. And this is like in a little, what looks like a tag you'd have at a conference, right? Uh, and this could be massive as well. I think there are in this show massive, like two meters versions. Uh, photo print with a custom made acrylic frame. Interesting. So also from Dan Control, sold, physical twin, so very nice. Uh, so selling work, uh, very impressive looking show for Dan Control. Here's Baziah making a blanket, very fake. Hilariously, ordered this amazing Baziah blanket a week ago from buybaziah.com and it arrived today. So Mikey de la Creme, a true patron here of the arts. I might grab one too, Joe Rogan's dad, awesome. Jules, there is value in producing art quickly and enables you to be topical and of the moment. So speaking of speed, this is value. there is value in taking your time. It forces you to ensure the message means something beyond the topical. So basically, this is a, yeah, so well put, Jules. And there's also value in taking your time. You can rush out a work, right, where you go, oh, I wish I hadn't put that out so quickly. So there is value, in a sense, my, where I am right now, personally, on this issue of speed. I love speed, and if I can make it fast, good. But it, I don't mint it immediately. I take a few days, even a week or two, before I think, okay, this is still what I want to put out in this form. Or I continue working on it, and then I take another week or two to look at it and whatever. So I think there's value in taking your time especially once you think it's finished and then, you know, in revision, so to speak, and deciding like, is this, if you're making it quick, uh, is this something I'm happy with? So very interesting. Tukes, uh, three weeks now since I quit weed and junk food, been exercising more and trying to sleep better as well. All good so far. Yeah. And uh, yeah, body first. If you ever have problems in your life I, or you lose your job, whatever, what I tell everybody and I try and follow myself is uh, body first, like take care of your body. Are you in shape, right? Go to classes at the gym where they tell you what to do. If you've never done that, or if you never go to the gym and you feel no motivation, go to classes where they tell you what to do. There are a ton these days and they're, and they're great and uh, very impressive and they're social too. So this is awesome, Tukes. Uh, that, and that's great. Uh, you know, I don't have time uh, for this sort of thing and anymore. Uh, and uh, junk food, yeah, like it's just, uh, that's great. Strange thing, uh, my household has been hit with another COVID strain, third this year, this is insane, since Monday. While not as bad as the last for myself, I will be less active here for a while, need to look after family members. So uh, shout out to Strange Thing. What a tough year Strange Thing has had in regard to COVID. I mean, terrible, three times. Wojak, W74.eth. And of course, I follow Wojak. Used look at this. So this is using Heather Santiago. Please, man. This is using a Santiago as an input. 
A stir algo and overpainting and grid manipulation with Santee's painting as an input. And we're going to see a few of these paintings. Partner in Crime, a stolen painting from NFT Uruguay. Look at how cool this is. So taking a Santiago and turning it into this space, I mean, I'm kind of back to the power of AI. Again, this is using AI as a tool. I assume this is AI. Stir algo, uh, you know, painting as an input. Maybe it's something else, uh, but pretty, pretty impressive. A remix here with Santiago. Uh, Anis Abdin, 200 animations. Congratulations uh, to Anis Abdin. That is a huge landmark. Huge. Uh, so putting out a work a day for the last 200 days. Known Origin shuts down. After careful consideration and evaluation, we can confirm Known Origin will continue to wind down its on-chain marketplaces and Minter and signpost to secondary marketplaces over the upcoming weeks. It was interesting. Like When I discovered Known Origin, like many people in 2020, 2021, it never really took, did it? And I guess eBay picked it up and... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a tough uh, scene. So who knows? Uh, some people are sad about it. Uh, so it is what it is. Here's Victor Acevedo. Acevedo, as, uh, as Victor put on the last, uh, or helped me with his name in the, our last spaces. He's going to be on uh, object.com on a space uh, and uh, with a art historian, uh, artist, writer, and art historian, Zvofi Valli Nagy, PhD. So uh, very cool. And uh, these were just minted. So uh, Victor just minted these works on Tezos. Uh, so again, what we might say works from the first generation, I think. Actually, this just came out. But an artist, you might say, from the first generation of digital art. We might say, so it seems perhaps Photoshop, maybe other things involved, uh, also maybe some 3D, uh, so interesting work here. Let's continue, there's another one. This one's from 2002. Again, kind of, you could see the perhaps a Photoshop influence. Check out the space, we discuss all sorts of things. And also, this is an edition of 10, not listed yet. This is from 2000, a geometrical period. And of course, uh, and there's a portrait of Victor's friend, and of course, Buckminster Fuller and the geodesic domes, I think, are incorporated into this work, which uh, Victor was influenced by. Okay, so let's go machine. Machine, speaking of natural talents. Speaking of natural talents, here's machine doing a collage. You know what I think it is? It's just this courage to just go in a completely different direction. I feel like we saw the same thing with the Italian boots as boots. Uh, kind of like when you see it, it's obvious, but I haven't seen anybody do that before. I'm sure somebody has. I see the same thing here, just a kind of whimsicality, so to speak, of this horse moving along with these jewels uh, falling from the horse and beautiful kind of legs here with high heels. Uh, just a really interesting, a very elegant horse as the title says, selling out at 10 Tezos each edition of 12. Beautiful work. Very interesting. Digital collage with Louis Vuitton legs and diamonds by Masha Hafner. So now is this by Masha Hafner? So not exactly sure if this is a uh, homage or not. Here is uh, this sold for 0 0.05, which is not bad these days, but 150 bucks. Let's call it 170 bucks. Yuri J with a very oddly kind of shaped work for often for the digital world. Very horizontal. Beautiful. I'm glad works like this are selling. You can be bullish on this scene and all sorts of interesting things going on there. Selling to Kobe Seo uh, and here, and this is the largest I have on it. So uh, just quickly, quickly, see if we can get a larger version. Here we go. So just to see what's going on here. So again, beautiful, beautiful Yuri J work. Almost like a figure there. And very interesting uh, piece here. Almost like a summer-like sort of situation. Here is Rat Cloak out of Ukraine boots. So doing another beautiful, what looks like a Photoshop painting, playing again with a couple of uh, different brushes here at least. It looks like we have, again, kind of like an oil stick going on here, as well as uh, just more uh, kind of uh, like typical physical brushes, shall we say. 
And again, doing this technique where you kind of mix in a bit of color, kind of a fairly, I won't, I won't call it too popular, but it is a modern day technique of painting where you add just a bit of color just to make it interesting. Uh, you could argue even here, all this beautiful mark making, uh, beautiful. And here are the boots, kind of Van Gogh uh, echo here and this figure, this haunting figure here underneath. Very haunted works and what's going on here again? This is on object edition of one, selling for 200 Tezos to Rorich, another patron. Keeping the scene going, these patrons, really. Uxine, Acta Non Verba, uh, making 0.3 ETH, 33 minted, and let's take a look here. Kind of a different color scheme for Uxine, isn't it? Let's maybe see. It's video, so I can't expand it anymore. <laughs> look at this. These arms almost kind of, I want to say almost Escher-like. Maybe that's not the right way. The mushrooms, that awesome snake we saw the other day. Almost kind of trading card-esque, uh, and here red and oranges, kind of unusual. Almost like this Grim Reaper type figure here, and this really cool, interestingly colored halo with a big, you know, and then echoed with this circle here. A uh, complicated image, acta non verba. Uh, so maybe act, don't speak, perhaps. Uh, interesting piece. Uh, by Uxine. Here is uh, Ed Marola, and I don't think we looked at this, True Story. So interesting title, and you see all these awesome textures here. Again, should this become like a hundred billion dollar market? I mean, you have to ask yourself, you know, where is that hundred billion dollars of value going to be? Surely, uh, a lot of that is going to be following a lot of these artists are going to be is going to be contained in a lot of the works of this artist of these artists. So just more interesting. Look at this again. We're kind of back to this impressionistic, you know, what works for the image? Not worrying is, you know, these are the kinds of things that artists face. It's like, should I do every row or should I just put an impression like the impressionist might of the keyboard? We're kind of back to the keyboard here. It's a great illustration. So it's an interesting question. And look at this, this echo putting the whole work inside here. So almost like an image in an image, an infinite regress here when you look close. Ed Marola, fascinating. Fascinating, fascinating. Bazaya, La Mesa de los Grandes, Bazaya out of Argentina. This on super rare. And here it is, a new work here, interesting composition kind of like a picnic here, seemingly. And there's a soccer ball and everything. Interesting uh, way that the uh, maybe the wine here is showed forward and or the here, you know, the objects on the table, you see forward. Interesting space. Let's put it that way. But the barbecue seems to be from above. Interesting piece. Bazaya, I believe, makes it all on the phone, amazingly. Uh, so very cool, great artist. Miss that piece, that is beautiful. Or that piece. So Bazaya, keeping on going there. And here is an interesting one from Nearbound at the end of the day. This is an interesting digital painting here. Someone on the bus, maybe after a long work day. Interesting digital painting. Uh, here is another one by Josh, great watcher of the show here, big supporter of the show. And here, just another work. I wonder, I assume this is Procreate. Interesting piece though, isn't it? Kind of looks like an indoor interior here, an exterior here, but is it a video game? Uh, very interesting. Kind of using video game uh, UI to analyze life, saying, hey, let's go for a drive here. You know, interesting, very interesting. And here is Myth with a work, a mysterious work on Zora. Look at this. So just putting the myth head on uh, a figure here. So it looks like appropriated. And so interesting piece here from myth four minted so far, Miss season two. Uh, very interesting. And here also out of Argentina, myth. And here, I believe, Nuff 1914 out of Argentina. Look how beautiful this is. The color of these uh, gradient teddy bears and almost this very fun kind of big mushroom house and birds. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. Here, this is 25 Tezo, still available, edition of one from Nov 1914. Pelota, so another soccer work. I got the other one, or I got another uh, soccer work. So here, 
as you can see, uh, plain soccer here. Look at that net. Awesome. Reminiscent of the abstracts, right? Reminiscent of 1914's abstracts. Very interesting. Also available. Here is uh, Kujeb, also known as his Dribble Waffle, with a few more uh, works here. And we see almost like a bit of a copy and, uh, copy and paste of the eye here as we see kind of drag through, almost like a Martin Joe, or it's not Martin Joe, uh, Martin Bruce, almost a Martin Bruce kind of vibe here in the cool kind of Mickey uh, hand and uh, beautiful sky, these beautiful, which seems to be uniform uh, across the series here. We see another uh, slightly different clouds, but slightly different kind of rendering, we might say, of the clouds. Here, Sync 16, uh, and here, another work here, almost with a cat face, cat mask, and some butter on, you know, or is that Kleenex on the head? So very interesting. Again, this kind of looks like it's copy and pasted from another software, but not sure. Again, 98% Nintendo 64. And here's Sync 15 and these awesome tears, which I feel like we saw before, and also the text coming from another software. I try to work and I keep thinking of World War III. Don't we all? I actually have... A work I, what I'm working on right now is another, finally, a new piece for the secret history of World War III. Uh, Got to gotta finish that series before World War III ends, uh, but, if we, but we should only be so lucky. RJ, homesick, uh, here. So, mysterious works from RJ uh, here, and so kind of looks like AI, kind of looks like it has been bitmapped, but I don't know. Uh, mysterious, that's why I say mysterious. Homesick 2. Here's Homestick 1, and you even have like a black kind of, uh, as you see here, see the black margin here and then above? Again, it's tempting to think this is AI, but I don't know. It may not be. Maybe it's just an image. So, and Homestick 3, I think there's 2, 1, and 3. Exactly, 1, 2, and 3, 5 Tezos each. Interesting kind of old kind of green monitor colors, almost like a Game Boy type rendering, uh, tri type uh, palette, right? Original Game Boy. Here is Brain Dead with a new one. Love the title here. Image Source, uh, Tezos, Mech Logo. Oh, so they're making, they're trying to make a new Tezos logo. I wonder how the Tezos people feel about that. So here is a, maybe they're all for it. Who knows? Uh, so here with uh, some just nice gradient here in the background. And here's the Tezos logo, the T and the Z. Uh, made by the artists. Uh, so this is 10 Tezos edition of 10. And interesting piece here by Kodanaka Zono. Quite a different work. So some all across the board, like uh, these two kind of, you know, uh, construction cones and these huge pixels dancing across. I like the new direction. Like, I think it's super interesting. Even this, I'm not sure it's a white. It looks like a gray, actually, in the background. Client Works 003. Interesting. Edition of one. Uh, sold for 10 Tezos. Here is that pinball guy with an interesting piece, as you see, almost like this digital rain here. Kind of an ASCII sky with clouds. Interesting color scheme and interesting animation, interestingly. Uh, three Tezos, edition of 10, almost sold out. Elena, Elna Frederick uh, with DVD logos, uh, hilariously. So another kind of retro tip of the hat to the retro. Uh, here is Zozo, Ikebana, arranging flowers or making flowers alive. And a fun, happy music. It's sold. Sold for 30 Tezos, so very cool. Zozo continues to do very well. Look at this. This is Murakit. So we looked at a lot of Murakit. Remember the effects on effects theory and all this, like the anime that's very pixelated and everything. Look at this one. Again, pretty radical work. Kind of looks like hyper-processed like manga or anime. Uh, GM, Murakit NFT. And here's Sui Soichi. Brain Wet is updated. So I think we saw an earlier version of this. So here we have a very jittery uh, version. 0 0.03 ETH, open edition, never ending. Interestingly, so wild artist here and a beautiful work on sealed.art, which I'm not super familiar with here. And look at how beautiful this is. Again, just, uh, you know, what seems to be kind of, uh, 
you know, just hyper textured digital art piece here. Very interesting. Again, kind of like Miracate using these kind of line drawings or cartoon style comic uh, images and then hyper processing them in a digital way. Here's Tornado Rodriguez Chill Wave. Awesome title. And here it is kind of at the playground here with a huge octopus here. Uh, 200 miles per hour and everything. Interesting color scheme. Beautiful. On Zora, let's just see. 22 minted so far, 72 days to go. Uh, very cool. Tornado Rodriguez on Zora. And here is Flor Flora Marquez. So excited to be featured in the Flora Culture Art Exhibition. And not exactly where is this? This is on Foundation. So it looks like a pretty cool show, actually, and just gorgeous uh, work here. Look at this drawing. Look at this digital drawing and even the water, just a, a what looks like the equivalent of a digital pen and ink. A beautiful, beautiful drawing. Uh, incredible. Here is Morlacos with a pretty interesting, it looks like a Pepe there. Uh, I assume this is a pastiche, not sure from where. It has a bit of a medieval feel to it, doesn't it? So Morlacos, who of course I follow, Los Morlacos, beautiful uh, drawing here, digital drawing. Here is Turkarak with uh, intermittent sleep. Interesting work here. Woman at a cafe, kind of passing out a little bit uh, with a beer. Uh, just more interesting work from Turkarak, uh, $25 on primary. Here is Santiago Ruao playing with the color a little bit with this blue background and pink, uh, pink kind of worm-like uh, figures here or shapes. Very cool. That's on Zora. Daniel W. It's kind of an eye in the pyramid. Super ego pan pantocrator, if I am pronouncing that right. So just an interesting illustrated GIF. That is an edition of one now and now available for 1,400 Tezos. So not cheap. Uh, here is Kiro with a couple of uh, with a couple of awesome glitch roms. Look at how beautiful this is. Got those horizontal pixels again, just awesome textures. Again, I feel like we're just scratching the surface here of digital art. I think there is so much territory to mine. I see it when I'm making work, like there's so many different directions you can go. Uh, this is awesome. Uh, here's another one, uh, just beautiful. And look at how nice and minimal this is. And look at underneath here. It feels like a golden age to a certain degree here, nice and cheap. Uh, place a bid at very low price there. Flow 2, uh, this is by Silva Santus. Look at this. So playing with the whole glitch rom motif or, or technique uh, and uh, going very vertical here, kind of the opposite of the Yuri J we saw before. Very interesting. Life Force on NES. And here is Quetzalego. This, uh, let's see if Stop Wars... And then here we see this classic retro TV background that many of us know from our youth. Uh, Quetzalego, Quetzal, Quetzalago, here, here you, here you go, Quetzal, uh, Galo. Uh, so interesting, 29 minted so far, so doing quite well. Here's Somfay, Somfay on uh, Instagram. Interesting, right? Different renditions. Very cool, and look at this gorgeous work by Renki. These are getting more epic, aren't they? I feel like they're getting just a hint more complex. We've been looking at Renki's work for at least a year, uh, almost every show, and here, they're, this one, it feels like they're starting to get a little bit more complex here, and I like it. I really like it. Uh, Joyo, edition of one, not listed as per usual. Here's Klaus, composition 244, gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, look at these colors. And this is 21 Tezos sold. Continues to sell Mont Most Wrong King every day. Just an interesting piece on X here. Very interesting. And we've seen work from them before. And of course, this is Ilay with a couple of works here. Variations 2 by Ilay. This looks like AI painting. Mark making. Very beautiful. Uh, and here's some more uh, variations. So just beautiful. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, the potential. I mean, this is the thing. What happens when the mark making starts to be more beautiful than on in real life? I mean, we're approaching that point, I would argue. Uh, like, 
which is quite something. Or where it's like way easier just to get beautiful mark making from AI than struggling. Here's just more texture. Uh, white solitude in collaboration with AI. So again, I assume this is AI, these brushwork. It's getting harder to tell though, uh, which is interesting to our earlier discussion. Look at this. Like the brush marks are getting better and better and better, aren't they? Look at that. I mean, and all the little noise and random specs and everything. Very impressive by White Solitude. Here is Neg AI uh, Pause. Just a beautiful work here. Another AI artwork. And beautiful hands and the different colors of the skin. Uh, beautiful. And the colors, I mean, it's very vibrant. And here is Mo Wellington as we are in the AI section now, kind of feeling like almost like a Renoir here in its composition and feeling GM and cool, kind of full of uh, food on the table there. Very interesting piece. Here's Canic Zapata. Stable diffusion output made with prompting changes. So another interesting experimental piece from Canic Zapata. A uh, few computers here, kind of sketchbook style looking in terms of its compositional style. Here we have a few works by Santiago, which I will move through kind of quickly here, but just to give you a, a taste of what people are making with AI right now. Look at that, quite consistent, uh, Santiago, like the, the series here. And these are just continue to stun me. I think these are gorgeous. Like I think if these were made physical, even like painted, you could be like, to me, this is something that could show up in a Gagosian or like a blue chip gallery. These kinds of works, this kind of almost like big anime kind of feels like uh, Murakami a little bit, right? Maybe that's why I feel that it could be in, uh, but they actually feel like they have more vitality as images, I would argue, or maybe, maybe they're similar. I haven't looked at Murakami for a while, if that's even the name. Uh, no hygiene. Interesting experimental AI abstract from No Hygiene. And this is Mopi Wellington again, La Faire. Beautiful uh, painterly work of ballerinas. And here is True Face again. I mean, a, astonishing work here. Kind of looks reminiscent of Michelangelo's Last Judgment, uh, but it's, it's its own thing. Humanity, a series of individual destinies. And here it is, 0 0.01 ETH. Uh, and of course, True Face, Pablo Radice making their own algorithms, AI algorithms. Here is AF, I think it's Alex, AKF, Kinga Fekete, Jet Setters 3. Kind of a lot of uh, figures in this one, too. A very cool piece. Wish we had it larger. This is on Instagram. Out here in Berlin. And here, Olive, Olivera Durdevic, how lovely. So again, I think there's some AI in here as well. Kind of look like Mao's, almost France and Bacon-like Mao's. And here is Ferrari by Walk, which is uh, auctioned off for 1.15 ETH. Beautiful work here, isn't it? This is from way back, I think in 2018, that Walk made this. So the master at work here. Uh, copyright 2018, very cool. And Requiem de la Nuez, canny. So it looks like here, not exactly sure where this is from, but interesting. I always love like paintings of the TV screen, so to speak. Paintings of the news. Uh, very interesting work here. I love the distortions, you know. Uh, here's David Hales, still needs a title, watercolor and ink. So brand new one from David Hales, beautiful watercolor here. Super talented artist. On Instagram, I've been following for years. Filippo Francocci, GM Friends, Cosmic Scream, Oil on Wood. Pretty nice abstract here. Pretty interesting abstract. Kind of looks like it uses randomness, and then it's kind of, you start with randomness maybe, and then it's kind of tightened up. That is my theory on that one. Gregoria Zanardi, uh, available conditioned freedom. So a work available on Foundation 2. It looks... Is this a physical or not? Hard to say. I put it in the physicals. I thought it was a physical, but I'm actually not sure. I think it's digital. Actually, this is a digital painting. We could have put it up front there. Look at this. I found this super interesting down here. Uh, so interesting piece. And Galina Nicotina, who I'm sure I follow here. Uh, so a new work here, new physical artwork rendered as NFT. And look at this beautiful brushwork here. Uh, very nice. And finally, Nugget Brain, who we were looking at yesterday in the video. Look at how beautiful this is. Uh, Nugget Brain makes beautiful, beautiful paintings. Just adds some texture and makes it look so easy. Awesome. 
Thank you for joining me again. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thanks again for the support. And until next time, take care.